everybody. Um, welcome to uh, the live stream tonight. This is the second live video I've done today. So you are in the Designs by Baby Moon Friends and Fans Facebook group, I hope. And I did not turn the sound on my phone off. Um, and uh, my name is Sheila Ryan, for those who of you who I haven't met before. And I'm the uh, digitizer with uh, Designs by Baby Moon. And we started four years ago. And um, around this time, four years ago, um, I put I had made some designs and I wasn't quite sure how they were going to go and I got brave enough to put them out there and um, four years later we're still here still making ridiculously cute embroidery designs and so I'm just uh, so excited that we've made it four years so every time there's an event I will celebrate it because I feel like we all have to celebrate all of the small successes that we have and um to me, it's uh, it's kind of like a marker. So um, I actually don't know the exact date that Designs by Baby Moon that I put that first design out there. I should have written that down. And I could probably go back in my Facebook memories and find it. But I do know that it was this week in January, four years ago, because there was something going on um, at my kid's school. And so I just know that when that happens, this is when we do it. So um, anyway, so happy birthday, Designs by Baby Moon. I did get cake and cupcakes um, to celebrate with. And I asked my kids, um, we had pizza for dinner because um, I we've got allergens in the air and I was just wiped out. My husband was wiped out. My kids were wiped out and had two going to work tonight. So um, all of my helpers that I usually have helping me cook dinner, or they were all busy. And so I was like, we're just ordering pizza. So we ordered pizza. And then I was like, let's do the happy birthday to baby moon and let's sing happy birthday to baby moon because they've always done that with me. And it's been kind of funny and fun. And um, they have always gotten a kick out of it. But I don't know what they're like. They were like, we are not singing happy birthday to baby moon today, mom. So um, they ate some cupcakes. I took a picture and I'll share that later. And um, uh, half of them were hiding under the table. And I don't know. It was just one of those days. So. We did have cupcakes. They were pretty good. I got them from a local bakery that I'd never tried before, but I wanted to support somebody local, and um, they were good. They were really good, beautiful cakes, and um, we would totally go back there um, when we need a custom cake because they were just amazing. Anyway, that's a lot of things to say to um, introduce what we're doing today. So um, every year for Designs by Baby Moon's birthday, we give away free designs and um, I usually mail out stuff, but I just honestly do not trust the mail um, at all. <laughs> I don't trust the mail service. I don't trust the shipping situation. And then there's all this, you know, other stuff in the world. And so um, I'm not giving away anything that I have to mail tonight. I'm just going to be giving uh, away design uh, gift codes to the Designs by Baby Moon website so that you have an opportunity to go pick out from the website whatever you would like if you're one of the winners tonight. So um, in order to enter this giveaway right now, um, this is Friday, January 14th, sometime in January, um, sometime in some place in Texas. Um, anyway, today is January 14th, Friday night, and if you will enter a uh, comment on this video in the Facebook group, that will get you entered to win, and then um, a little bit later, I'll go through all the comments, put those in a sorting thing, and then let the randomizer pick out a winner, maybe two or three winners. We'll see how it goes. So get your comments in. Tell me where you're listening from or watching from. Um, and tell me if you've already picked up the design that's free on the Designs of Baby Moon website. If you go to the pinned post in the group, it's the most recent pinned post or under maybe it says announcements on your screen. Facebook changes it all the time. So whatever it says, go there and you will see the link and the code to this adorable earring file. These are the, I've been wearing them all day. These are the love earrings. And I now have several ones on the website that are called love earrings, but these actually say L-O-V-E with the little heart as the O. And um, this is the design is free. Uh, there's a code to use and it's in that pin post. And if somebody wants to put that code in the comments here so that you don't have to go look for it or get off or open another tab or whatever, if you're on mobile, um, somebody can drop that in the comments and that would be great. And if not, I will put it in there later. But I want you to go over to the website, go grab this free design. And um, it's free when you use the code and um, come back over here and um, let's stitch this up together. So I have my embroidery machine all set up. Um, I think you might have seen on the list 
um, some supplies that you will need. And among the supplies, I'm going to remember everything I wrote down, uh, you'll need some vinyl for the front and back of your earrings, front and back. These are two-sided, so we're going to hide all the stitches. We're going to get my hair out of the way. Um, we're going to hide all the stitches with a piece of vinyl on the back so you won't be able to see the backing of those stitches. And then, um, so you'll need two pieces of vinyl, one for the front, one for the back. You'll need some thread that you want to do it in the colors that you like. You'll need some scissors. You'll need cutaway stabilizer. You'll need your embroidery machine, of course. And then we'll need some earring findings and then assorted uh, hardware things that I'll show you in a minute. So um, we're going to use these. I'm going to make these as earrings first and show you guys. And then I want to show you with the next set that I'm making right now with you, how you can use these as little charms for a zipper bag or for a key fob, a little bitty, itty tiny, teeny tiny key fob. You could also use them as a, you know, pull for a jacket or you can just add them onto something. So they're just an extra little dangly bumper. And um, I love things that are, you know, cute hanging off of things, backpacks, purses, any place I can add a little bit of extra. Um, I love doing that. So um, there's lots of different ways that you can use this little charm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my camera and I'm point it at my embroidery machine and make sure that you can see all of the things that I'm doing. Okay. And so please feel free if you have any questions as we're going along to ask those questions. When I move the camera, I'm going to check on my screen so that I can see what you guys are saying. And hopefully this is all working smoothly. So I have new... <laughs> yet another uh, new setup in here with a different computer. So hopefully the sound is good and the lights are okay. And um, we're just going to go on from there. So um, let me flip the camera and we'll get started. All right. Let's get this in just the right place because I want you to see I want you to be able to see clearly exactly what I'm doing here. Let me get a little bit more light on it. And of course, I can hear that my dog is right outside my sewing room door and he, she is wanting to come in. So that's how she is. Let's get a little bit more light just to make sure that might be enough. Put one more light on there. Okay, just to make sure we've got plenty of light. And you know, the light changes throughout the day and we've got good windows and good, got good ceiling lights in here, but we have to always double check all the lighting so that there is plenty of, um, you can see everything that's going on in front of me. And so let me look at the, oh, I see comments. Y'all, thank you so much for being here. Okay, I see Penny Stark. Hi, Penny. Hi, Tammy. Um, I see my embroidery digitizer friends in here. Hi, Favette. Uh, thank you all so much for being in here. Hi, Janie and Melissa, Mark Melissa. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are watching with me. So thank you. I'm going to save this video. Just so you know, this video will be saved um, in the um, Facebook group. And then I also, if it comes out well, I'll do some edits and then I'll put it over on YouTube so that it will be over there so we can have this to reference for forever or as long as the internet is hanging out with us. So um, what I have is I already have the design loaded on my embroidery machine. And I think earlier I told you it was going to take like 10 minutes to stitch out. I was wrong. It takes five minutes to stitch out. So the stitching part actually only takes five minutes. So that's great. That means that we don't have to listen to the noise of the machine a whole lot. So I've already got my placement stitch um, on the stabilizer. And uh, you'll notice I'm using up a cone. I pulled this off of my multi-needle embroidery machine, but there's still a lot, you know, of thread on it. And I don't like wasting thread. So I'm going to try to make this. So we're going to play thread chicken tonight and let that be the lettering of this. Um, I'm going to use this scrap of this whipped no, this isn't whipped avocado. This is the Honeydew Metallic from my Punk Bordery. Um, and it's just a really gorgeous color. It's kind of a light minty aqua. It's very light, but it's very shiny. And it's just gorgeous. And um, I love the vinyls from my Punk Bordery. These are just scraps. So I had a whole bunch of scraps over in, my, on, you know, in a pile. And I just saved these because these little scraps left over from making key fobs or luggage tags or 
appliques. Um, these are perfect, the perfect size for making earrings. And so don't throw your scraps away until they're, you know, there's absolutely nothing left because they're plenty large enough to make something else beautiful out of them. So just a tip. Now I do like, I mean, every once in a while I'll go through a scrap purge, but I've already actually purged my scraps this year and gotten those out of the house. And yet I still have more. This is, uh, you know, I've already made a bunch more vinyl scraps. So um, there's never an end to the scraps. These I've already stitched out over here and I used another metallic. This is the Mocha Metallic from uh, My Punk Gorger as well. Um, and I already stitched these out over here. And while these are stitching out, I'm going to be cutting these and showing you what we're going to do with them. But um, I'm going to get the lettering started on this version. So I'm going to put my vinyl, one piece of vinyl overneath, overneath, over the placement stitches that I've already stitched out. That was step number one. And I'm going to make sure that my vinyl completely covers those. So I can't see any of the edges of my placement stitches anywhere. There's plenty of a border and this is just a scrap so I don't have to worry about wasting any. Um, if you needed to cut out the exact size, the design file includes a PDF color map and you can print that out on your computer and that will show you the exact size that you're gonna need and use that as a template. Um, but you, you can also just stitch it on your stabilizer and then eyeball the size that you're gonna need. So let me put the foot of my machine down and let's start stitching the lettering of this design. There's two steps. Um, for the top version, there is the lettering, and then there's the little heart. Let's see if you can see that. The lettering, the L, the E, and then the heart is the O, and that is a separate step. So you'll need two colors of thread and um, a third if you want to match the outside of your design. For this one, I used white for the L, V, E, and I used red for the heart, and then I used black or, uh, you know, what? actually is that black um, to finish the outline, the outline of it. Okay, and while that's stitching, those are going good. I'm gonna move this thread guy up here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. So these have just a fun little shape. It's kind of a little deco frame. And um, if you are, um, you know, into shapes and stuff, it's really an oval and a rectangle put together. And um, I merged them into one shape so that they, they became one. And uh, that's how I got that shape. So super fun. And for those of you that might be curious, I did this all in Stitch Artist in, uh, embroidery software by Embrilliance, which I love using. It's got a lot of tools that I can um, get a lot of, so I have a lot of control over where the stitches go and what the stitches are doing. I love using it. Just in case, you know, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so I'm trimming this out and I'm leaving a little bit of a border. Ah, red chicken. I don't know if we're going to make it. Um, I'm leaving a little bit of border all the way around that outside stitching and that's going to give me, you don't want to cut up close to it. Vinyl's not going to fray. So I'm not worried about any of this frying at all, but I'm leaving a little border because I like the way that looks. I'm going to move this out of the way. All right, come on thread, you can do it. I really want to just use that thread up and um, not leave any out. Okay, let's see if we can say anything. Okay, let's see. Um, thank you for leaving comments. That helps. And then I can, um, that's what I'm going to go through um, the comments on here and see um, what you say. Oh, yes, Penny, these are your mushrooms. And um, I've already thrown away the gnomes of the day that can come out. So um, I used to keep all my stitches, stitch outs, just to kind of compare what they were doing. But um, today is not the day. I just threw them out because I was done. I was done with them. <laughs> I don't want to see their bellies full of holes. So yeah, those are the mushrooms. These, these are the small and large mushrooms that um, came out yesterday. I think I, I was working, I've been working on these for several days, but I got them done yesterday and it has a small and a large version of the set and they're preceding lace. They're not really lace in the sense that they're lacy. But they're a freestanding design, so 
when you do them with matching bobbin thread on the back. Um, they look as good on the back as they do on the front almost. And so when they're hanging from your ears and dangling around, it's no big deal if you see the backs of them. So on this kind of earrings, maybe you can hear me a little bit better now that it's not, um, we made it, we made it. We still have thread on here. We're done with the black. Okay, thank you, black thread. Let's cut this off properly. Do the right way. Pull that out. Thank you, thread. Okay, I'm gonna set you aside. I think we're really, really close to the end of its life. I'm gonna get my red thread out that I'm gonna use for the heart. And uh, I, you know, you'll notice this is a different brand of thread. I normally use isocord threads. My machines just like it. And I have one machine that's super picky um, and it will only use iso isocord threads. So I just have the isocord stuff, but I'm trying in this machine, I haven't seen how it works with other brands of thread. So I have a few spools of glide that I'm trying out. So I just thought I'd test it out with one of these. Um, and on my, on my multi-needle, um, glide has a series of bobbins that match uh, the top threads. And so I like using those glide bobbins in my multi-needle machine. So, um, but I'm not going to use itty bitty cones of thread over there. They have great big ones, but anyway, that's just an aside. Let's stitch that heart. See, we're almost done. So this is the last step and it takes less than a minute to do this stitching step. While, uh, while that stitching, you know what, let me show you these because these came out, did I finish these today or yesterday? The bees, do y'all see the bees? Um, I have a whole bunch of these little uh, freestanding lace ones that I've been working on. Um, and I just cannot, I can't stop. Um, I thought after I got the bee done, I would do a ladybug. These are the bees. So I've got the mushrooms, the bees. Uh, the gnomes are in progress. There's some flowers, different flowers in progress. Um, but hopefully those will be done. Maybe next week. We have time. So I'm not in a rush. Um, Which is unusual for me because usually I'm always in a rush and I'm like, I gotta get this out there. No rush, no time limit, nothing. Okay, we're almost done with the red. It's doing a little outline around the heart. And now the top of our stitching is done. So this is all the stitching that's gonna happen on the top of the hoop. So what I'm gonna, I did that and wasn't supposed to. Sorry, I was supposed to cut the thread and pull it from the needle. Y'all know that, right? That's the proper way to do it. Um, nothing to see here, folks except this is a visual video, so there's everything to see here. I'm gonna snip that little thread off just to get it out of the way. And then um, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. Now that this top stitching is done, I've got another scrap that matches it. You could use the same material or you could use something completely different. Um, I like to use, lately, I've been using the same material on the front as on the back for earrings. I just like that, but there's no rules about it. You could use, something completely different. You could use the same thing. You could use something that coordinates. It's, 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 a, it's whatever you wanna do. There are no rules here. So our lettering is all done and I'm taking my hoop off the machine and I'm flipping it over. So here's the back side. And when you're doing embroidery, you know, we're always worried about it. Like what if, what if somebody sees the back? Well, the neat thing about doing in the hoop projects is we're going to cover up those back stitches with this extra piece of vinyl. And I'm just going to take a little bit of, this is embroidery safe tape. And I'm making sure that this tape is not anywhere close to where the stitching line is. This placement stitch is going to show you where the last stitch is going to stitch. I'm going to add a couple of pieces there just so it's not going to flip out on me. Um, but this is, this is just painter's tape and um, it's pink. I like pink. Um, but it comes in all colors. You can get it at Home Depot or Walmart or any place that sells uh, painting supplies. Um, and then I'm going to change my thread. I'm going to use white. Um, I could use this minty color, but there's really so few stitches that it's just going to be the texture that you're going to see. The white will be just fine with this vinyl. Okay. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this final outline stitch like this black one on here. Let me take one of these out of my ears. I'm gonna show you on this one because maybe you can see it better on this one. So, 
I did these on um, patent vinyl. This color is called Gunmetal Gray from My Punk Forgery. And most of my vinyl I get lately is from there. Um, it just makes it easier to keep it all in one shop. It makes it easy for my accounting when I'm, you know, loading my supplies on my taxes just to have one vendor. Um, so that's where most of my vinyl has come from in the last couple of years. So I, Amy always gives great service and beautiful vinyls. And I've never had a problem with anything that I've ever bought from her. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the final outline with this white thread and it's going to seal the front and back together. So we're not going to see any of the stitching on the back. Oh, you know what I need? I did not check because the last time I did this design, oh, I need to raise that up. Okay. Oh, yep. That's what I was worried about. Um, I used black thread in the bobbin and I want to change that. I want to change that back to white because I'm using this light material. Let's just change that real quick. I'm glad I remember that because otherwise it would have a black line on the back. Let's get a new bobbin out of here. You can see inside my junk drawer here. That's not my junk drawer. These are organized. Okay, my new bobbin. And let's put you back in the right spot. Or at least somewhere reasonably close. Okay, let's put this new bobbin in there. Take off a little bit. And just get that in there. So our bobbin is going to match the top. And put my hoop back on. Um, if you didn't want to use tape, you could use a little bit of a 505 sticky spray um, or the KK2000, KK100. It's a, it's a sulky brand of um, sticky spray. The other one that I like is the OD brand of the sticky spray. And I like those two brands because they don't make you have an asthma attack if you're prone to asthma. Um, just a side thing. If it, that's not something you're worried about, then you can use whatever sticky spray you want. They're also, uh, those two brands are also safe for embroidery, so they're not going to gum up your needle. Um, and I know for sure other brands may gum up your needle more than you want. So those two I've tested and they work great. Okay, here comes that final outline. And it's just stitching the front and back closed together. One is done, and let's do the next one. This part takes less than a minute, so that's fun. Let me move our mushrooms out of the way. Put the mushrooms for being here for us. Get some threads to move out of the way. Okay. So I got those. Got these. I'll put that one back in my ear, so that's good. Okay, so I can tell that okay. I'm done with that. I'm ready to take these off. So now those are done. Look how cute those are. Isn't that fun on the mint? That minty honeydew. So now what I need to do is I need to trim these extra threads off. And I like doing this while it's all still on the hoop because um, it kind of holds it taut for me. I don't have to work very hard or worry about trimming something that I'm not supposed to be trimming. I'm just going to cut those off. There's a little bit here. And uh, this machine does cut the jump stitches, but um, this is a very tiny design and those letters are super close together. So there is a little bit, just some teeny, teeny, tiny, the tiniest little stitching between the letters. And if that bugs you, just get some super fine point scissors and just snip those out. Okay. It's not a very, th these aren't like long. This is the beginning stitch. From where it started that thread and it just got caught underneath there and I wasn't watching so I gotta pick it out otherwise it'll bug me forever so I'm gonna trim those little threads off snipping them you could use a seam ripper I just want it clean on top um I know uh, Tammy Osterk you're here and she uses a lighter y'all she is like super skilled with fire and she can use a lighter and clean up those threads like nobody's business so maybe you want to try that I don't mind snipping and I am not good with fire, so <laughs> I did try. I tried it, but I, I got too close to the flame, so it wasn't, it didn't end well for us. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these around just like I trimmed those, and hopefully you'll be able to see 
how I'm trimming them out. I'm just trimming carefully, leaving a little bit around each you know, little border. And you know, if this is, they're super small. So if this was really big, you could see more clearly that this is an oval inside a rectangle. So that's the shape that I'm thinking of as I'm trimming. So I can still get that oval effect inside those rectangle corners. Kind of a little deco vintagey feel. One's done. Let's do the next one. And because these are scraps, I don't have to worry about, you know, anything really. I even have enough left on this side for that one to make another one. So that's going to go back in the scrap pile. But the rest of this, I think we're done with. I think we've gotten all the goodness out that I want to try to get out. So thank you, scraps, for being here for me. Um, I love make. I mean, I love using up things, and I love having scraps of from projects that I really had fun making. So that I have those. Okay, that one's done too. So we've got our two there. So if we were going to do this in the earrings. We have a complete set. So um, I do want to do them as earrings. So we're going to do that first. And I want to just show you a couple of ways to do them. Oh, you know, what? let me take these ones that are in my ears out because I do want to show you what I did for these. So with these, I can actually unbend this and take this out. Um, what I did for these, this pair, and this is what I have been doing for most of my earring designs for the last forever. I mean, since I've been making in the hoop earrings. Um, and I just have punched a hole with these little itty bitty 1.8 millimeter pliers or hole punchers. These are used for stamping, those metal stamping blanks. They're used for punching in the metal. And this brand is called Euro Punch. And when I got it, it came with an extra punchy part because if you're using these for metal, that's gonna get dull really fast and you'll need to replace that. I've been using these for uh, so long that the lettering is starting to come off. This says round 1.80 millimeters um, and it's starting to wear. So I've been using it so long that the lettering is wearing off the handles, but I have not even made a dent in this because I'm not using it for metal. I'm using it to punch out pieces of vinyl or leather. So I just punched a tiny little hole right in the top of the middle. Super easy. And then with that hole, I can take these really nice ear wires. These are the, my hair is stuck in that one. These are the uh, double J curved ear wires from Craft Chameleon. And I really like these a lot. They're super easy to use. You don't need any jump rings or anything. I'm gonna take them, I'm gonna put it in the hole, wiggle it through, and then this little stopper part right there, I'm just gonna squeeze that so it touches that ear wire and then my earring's done. That's all, that's all you need to do with those. So that's super easy. Um, if you wanted to, you could use some of the other traditional kind of ear wires, like you would pick up in the craft section at any store that has any craft supplies. These are the fish hook ear wires. So they've got, they look like they're kind of wire wrapped with a ball and then a loop at the bottom of them. With these, you're gonna need some jump rings to go between the earring and the earring finding so that they'll sit right in your ears. Okay, so you would have to, we would punch a hole, then we would set in a jump ring and then attach the jump ring to both um, the earring finding as well as the earring piece so that they would dangle and hold right. Okay, so that's another way you can do it. Um, this way that I'm gonna show you tonight is something I'm really actually excited about. Um, and I'm blaming um, Penny Stark actually for this <laughs> because um, I had to make another order because I wanted more colors. Um, so Penny, a couple of days ago, posted this link to these earring findings. And at first I thought, I'm not gonna buy those. Those are weird. I don't want those. Um, and then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, oh, you know what? That would actually be a really great solution for those mushroom earrings that I've been working on, the gnomes and the, the other things, I just thought they would be perfect. So um, she showed a link to these. And in the tutorial for this set, I put a link for this kind of ear wires so that you could get them if you wanted. If you wanted to use these, you don't have to, but I'm gonna show you how to if you want to. So these are called pinch bale 
earring findings. And this part that hangs off right here, instead of it being, so it's got that little loop, but it has this little crab claw kind of thing that pinches and that's called a pinch bale. So the way that they're marketing things is for people that make jewelry earrings with beads that are top, that have a hole across the top. And you could squeeze this onto the bead and it would hold it on there through the top like this. Well, for in the hoop earrings, we could put that on top of here and we don't even have to worry about punching a hole. So I could take this one. I like that rainbow color. Um, I can take, th these are a rainbow color one. So they're like metal that's been um, treated so that it gets that effect to it. I'm taking some needle nose pliers. These aren't anything fancy. These aren't even jewelry needle nose pliers. These are just, you know, my pink tool ones. Um, if you don't have pink tool ones, because you don't want your own tools, um, you can go out into the garage and I'm pretty sure you probably have a pair of needle nose pliers in the garage. And you just squeeze that bad boy on there you don't even have to punch a hole because this is vinyl and it's gonna soak, soak, squeeze. It's gonna squeeze on there and it's holding it and it's not going anywhere at all. So that's it, that's all you have to do. And that is so easy. So I'm gonna put the other one on there so those match. Soak. My words have escaped me. <laughs> okay, here's another one. And I'm making sure that the ear wire goes up and over to the back. So when I put it on here, I'm just going to let it rest on the front there and hold it on. Um, and then give that a little squeeze and it's done. That is it. That's all you have to do with these. I mean, so that is seriously like the fastest earring I've ever made. Literally. And look how cute that is. I mean, isn't that adorable? Ta -da! Those are done. Okay, those are done as earrings. So we have some earrings. But what if we want to use these for something else? So let's use them for something else. I'm going to take these off right here. So we've got two sets of earrings. I'm going to go ahead and put these right here. So two different styles of hooks. Both of these are my favorite kind. I really don't care for those ones that I showed you, those other kind that I just, and now, now that I use these, I, I don't really want to use the other ones. Um, these are cool and these are great as earrings. You could make these for your girlfriends, your kids, um, whoever you wanted to make some earrings for coming up for Valentine's Day. Um, but you could also use this as like a charm for a bag, a zipper bag or a pull for a zipper bag, you know, the little charm piece. So it can hang off the end. It could be a teeny tiny key fob. You could even put a tassel on it and use it kind of as a bookmark. So these are some bookmark, you know, kinds of designs that we have that um, we put a grommet in, punched a hole, put a grommet in, and then looped a bookmark tassel through. These are just silky bookmark tassels. You can get them, you know, a hundred of them on Amazon for like 10 bucks. So um, you could do that with these and then you would have a bookmark. And what you would need for that is you would need something that's a bigger hole puncher than this, because this is only gonna give you a very small little hole, big enough for just a wire you know, something really small like that. We're going to need something a little bit bigger, though, if we're going to put anything else through there. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get my crocodile from over here. And my crocodile, oh, moved you out of the way. Let me kick you out of the way. Um, I'll bring you back over here. My crocodile has two different size holes that it'll punch. And I normally use this big one to set in eyelets or, you know, to make a hole to set in eyelets, like in this bookmark. Okay or an ornament, that's, I use that bigger hole, but for, this is such a small little piece, I'm gonna use the smaller hole, okay? Now, I can get eyelets that are this small, that one eighth of an inch size, and use them as eyelets, but there's really not a whole lot of room here, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna punch the hole right at the top in the middle, making sure that I'm not punching any of the threads. I'm just gonna punch the hole. It's all done. Let's go ahead and do this one too. And we're going to use these as little charms, okay? And I'll show you a couple of different ways to use them as charms. There's this one. Now that one has a little hole too. Now let's set the crocodile aside because it's big. I don't want to drop it. Okay. Um, and now with the crocodile, sometimes you might need to trim off some of the part that you punched. Okay. 
Okay, here, that's done. Does it have nice little holes? Not little, but good size. And what I want to do is I want to try one of these tassels and put one of these tassels through it. So I have a box of these, um, you know, um, I love these little cases. These are pencil cases that, uh, you know, places sell around back to school time. And they work great for holding, you know, things like these tassels and keeping them organized for me. Let's see if we can find something that matches. Oh, red. Let's use red. How about red? Let's set that aside. And I'm gonna, that red doesn't quite match, but that's okay. For this purpose, we'll do it. I'm just going to set it through the hole. Kind of punch it in there. You might need to use something to help you get it through there. And I don't want to use a... I don't want to use anything sharp. So I'm going to use this puller tool to go in there, get the loop of my tassel. Oops, without mangling it. Uh oh, I already did it. I did something. Let's unmingle that. Oh, you're janky. Okay. Do I have time to fix you or should I just grab the other one? The other one is not here. Oh, there it is. Yep, we're just going to use the other one instead. Sorry about that. I knew there was a janky one. Did I just throw my little piece in there? It's still on that one. Sorry, we'll fix you later. Okay, I'm use this one instead. This one is not janky. These are just loop turners. And they're in the sewing notions section. And I'm gonna use it to, it's got a little hook. I'm gonna close the hook so that it doesn't get caught. And then it just pulls it through there. And now I have the loop going through that hole that we made. And I'm just gonna loop it around the tassel and voila, that's a little charm and it's done. So it's an itty bitty teeny tiny bookmark that would just be adorable. I mean, so cute. How cute is that? Ta-da, I feel like that is just a really super cute little gift. Now, another thing that you could do instead of using it like that as a just a tiny little bookmark, um, you could use it as a teeny tiny little zipper pull. And so there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could make it as a zipper pull with um, a jump ring or I should have grabbed them out and I didn't. Um, let me see if I can get them real quick opening my big drawer with my ear, my findings in it. And hopefully I can find really quickly without pulling any of these cords out. Hopefully I can find really quickly what I'm looking for. I think I'm gonna need one of these. And then going further and further into my drawer and still not putting my hand on exactly what I wanted to see if I could find but that's okay. Nope, here it is. I found it. Okay. This is what I wanted to find. Just the drawer. That is the drawer full of everything. We just lost the light. Okay. If that's all we lose tonight, then we're doing really good. Okay. So what I grabbed out of here was a ball chain. So these are just little bitty ball chains. And again, you can get these on Amazon. They're like they're nothing. They don't cost hardly anything. And that one eighth of an inch size is just perfect for slipping through this little tag as a little charm. And now you can clip the ends together and hook this on just about anything. You could hook it on your keys. You could hook it on a zipper pull. You could hook it on a bag. You could hook it on anything. It's really, it's, it's cute. You could also, let's take this off and let me show you one more thing you could do. I can get that off. Okay, didn't want to come off. Um, you could use some jump rings and make it a teeny tiny key fob. So these are split rings. And this is a very small one. This one I think is 12 millimeters. This one is 25 millimeters. And they, they, they're they sized in millimeters. So um, I this is actually about an inch across. There's a, I keep a, I keep a cutting mat here, so I always have a reference of how big something is. Um, so there, it's just, maybe it's a little bit under an inch all the way across. And this one's just about, just a little bit more than a half an inch across, okay? So they're a good size jump rings, these are split rings. They're not teeny tiny at all. And um, I've got another pair of pliers here. Um, the way you could use these is you could open up the jump ring, okay? And I'm using a jump ring opener. 
to open that jump ring up so I don't have to use my nails. And then I'm just gonna loop it through this hole that we punched with the crocodile. And just get that in there. And while that little loop is open, I'm gonna slip the bigger ring on it. And now you've got a little key ring or key fob. And if you wanted even more, even more extra, you could put um, one of these leather tassels on there. So let's see if we have something that's red-ish. That is actually the right color. So let's use that one. Um, let's use this reddish tassel. And I'm going to put it on the same jump ring, the, the, the little bit, the smaller one right there. I'm just going to open that up and try to hold it with, you know, I don't have three hands and that's going to pop off. Let's try this again. Let's try this so that we're not backwards or upside down. Okay. Da -da -da. There we go. Okay. I'm going to take that jump ring and I'm going to put that tassel on it. And now it looks like there's a lot going on here, but let me show you. It's totally worth it. Now you have super cute key fob with a tassel. And so it kind of has bounce and our charms on there. The love charm, that is just adorable. These are super, these would be really great for, um, like if you have teenagers and they need some friend gifts for Valentine's Day, these would be perfect because they are cute and they are trendy and they are not weird mom things that you might be, you know, you know how it is. We make something and we think, oh my gosh, this is adorable. And our teenagers roll our eyes. This is not that. All of my teenagers have said, oh, that's so cute. So um, we have expert teenage opinions that um, these are a good, a good design. Teenagers like them. Um, anyway, they'd be cute. They're a little bit more mature than, you know, cutesy, cutesy. Uh, so maybe not your elementary kids, but certainly older teenagers, high schoolers anyway, middle schoolers. Are just hard to please so they you know it's if it's not minecraft or anime i can't i can't i can't make it happen for them but <laughs> i'll go into the store anyway that's it let me uh move the camera real quick and so i can talk to you guys and make sure that we're talking okay um what else was i going to tell you i didn't did i bring my list in here that's not my list i didn't bring it in here so that's okay let's see i am here. It's good. That's what we got. Um, so um, thank you for hanging out with me. You know, I don't have any earrings in and I feel not quite dressed all the way. Um, but um, thanks for hanging out with us tonight to stitch up these little doodads. Um, I will check the comments and um, be sure to leave a comment. I'm not going to close out any of these giveaways today. I will do it probably Sunday evening. And the reason is because the Facebook algorithm is just weird and it is um, not showing it to people like in a linear fashion. So if you see this on Saturday or even Sunday before, uh, let me say six o'clock Sunday central time, um, and you want to get in on any of these giveaways that you see in the Facebook group, please feel free to leave a comment. I will close the comments when I'm ready to pick some winners and then we'll come again, you know, we'll, we'll be live and um, I'll come back and then tell you and tag everybody so that everybody who wins can find their code. Um, but meanwhile, for the birthday, rest of the birthday fun, um, go grab this design set and make something out of it. One of the other posts that I have in the Facebook group is another giveaway post. And so if you will go grab this and spend 10 minutes stitching it out and cutting it out and less than that with your scraps and post a picture on that thread or somewhere in the group and just letting me know that you got it and you made it, um, you will also be entered to win a uh, $25 gift certificate from Designs by Baby Moon. And I'll have a couple more things this weekend and I'll be sure to post them in and then we'll leave them open all weekend long so that everybody has time. But I'm so glad that you were able to hang out with me here. I'm gonna go back and check comments and um, I hope that this was fun for you guys. And thank you for being here. I'm just so glad that you're here and we will, um, we'll see you soon. So thank you.